Hey guys, Spud here. And today we're going to take a look at the brand new primary data link track mode for the joint helmet mounted queuing system of your F16C Block 50 Viper. I believe this is the standout feature of a slew of updates for the F16 in the latest open beta update. This is a system that you guys are going to be using all the time when you hop into your DCS F16, whether you're getting into a persistent multiplayer server, a scripted mission, or a little single player scenario you've created for yourself. This is going to be a big game changer and really update and upgrade the situational awareness of many of those DCS F16 pilots around. So let's go ahead and get started guys. All right, guys, we've got ourselves a beautiful early morning over the waters of the Persian Gulf for our tutorial and demonstration of the new primary data link track mode of the joint helmet mounted queuing system of our F-16C. So let's get started today by setting up the cockpit of our aircraft for engaging in air to air combat. We'll first go to the air to air master mode and on the blank spot of our menu row of buttons down below, we'll bring up our TGP. We'll increase the brightness on that guy and head on back to our HSD. On our left MFD, for our radar, let's go to Twiz mode. We'll push out the radar display range to 80 nautical miles and let's go for an azimuth of 30 degrees. We'll leave her in a four bar scan for now. Coming across, we've got our master arm set to arm. Coming down, we're going to set our programs in case anyone shoots at us today. We'll turn on our HMD, of course, for this tutorial and demonstration, and we'll turn off our external lights. Alrighty, we should be good to go for engaging some MiGs. Because we've air started our F-16 today, our HMD should be properly aligned and ready to go. However, if you're cold start starting your F-16, ensure that you have your HMD aligned, otherwise the symbology will not be superimposed over the actual aircraft in space and time. It'll be somewhere way off from where that aircraft actually is, which can be very confusing in the heat of combat where you're really trying to rely on the symbology to increase your situational awareness in the fight. So on to the tutorial portion of this video, it's very, very simple to make the new primary data link track method work for your HMD. However, unlike the FA-18, you only have one data link track actually displayed with the primary data link track on the field of view of your HMD. Now this can be a bit limiting, but it is still a massive upgrade to your situational awareness of what aircraft are flying around you in the battle space in your F-16. First thing we need to do is make our HSD our SOI or sensor of interest. We do that by going down on the display management switch, or aft, however you like to describe it. We know that this has worked correctly when we see a white box around our HSD. Moving our radar cursor switch moves the cursor for the HSD. Now to make this work, all we have to do is take this little plus sign, our HSD cursor, place it over the top of our desired data link contact, and go target management switch forward or up, however you like to describe it again. We now know that that data link contact is the primary because of the octagon that is now displayed around it on our HSD page. If we look outside of the aircraft, in the field of view of our HMD, we now have an octagon around the lead aircraft in that two ship of FA-18s. The 2-0 underneath that octagon of course symbolizes that those aircraft are flying at 20,000 feet. We can also cycle through the various data link contacts on the field of view of our HSD by making them the primary by going target management switch right. We can see that octagon moving to different data link contacts on the field of view of our HSD. But when you're looking outside trying to do something like that, it can be a little bit confusing as to where and who you're actually tracking without looking at your HSD. So I highly recommend at least starting off that you use the HSD cursor with your radar cursor switch to place 
the cross over the selected data link contact and going target management switch forward so you know exactly which flight you've selected. Which in this case is an enemy flight of MiG-29s that is behind this flight of F-18s and it's confusing because they are both at 20,000 feet. Now when it comes to only having a single data link contact available for you to be displayed on the field of view of your HMD using the primary data link track method, I highly recommend that you either place it over the top of a friendly flight that's say in the middle of a guerrilla group of enemy aircraft such as this little flight of F-16s right here to help you avoid fratricide or place it over the top of your wingman to help you keep track of your wingman as you merge into that dogfight so that way you don't accidentally commit fratricide on your wingman and you can keep track of him for an easy link back up into formation after you guys have downed the enemy MiGs. So for fun here, why don't we go ahead and prosecute one of these flights of MiGs and shoot them down while using our new primary data link track uh, mode in our HMD. In this MIS file, we have all of the aircraft around us kind of just flying lazy racetrack orbits with no weapons and set not to evade too harshly against enemy attacks, as well as not to attack any aircraft around them. I use this MIS file constantly in order to teach new DCS World pilots how to use their fire control radar in their F-16, F-18, F-14, JF-17, or any other fast mover in DCS world. All right, so let's go ahead and go after these MiGs over here. So let's set them as our primary data link track. We can see them off to our right-hand side. We'll turn off our autopilot. And they have since, they're about to disappear anyway, off of the field of view of our HMD because they have disappeared off of our HSD. Keep in mind that the AWACS's radar applies, has the same physics applied to it when it comes to actually tracking targets as things fly through the air. The enemy flights are now, for the most part, flying away from the AWACS, and it's going to be a lot harder for the AWACS to keep track of it, and that's why we lost them as data link contacts. As you guys are well aware of, data link is not a magic system that allows you to have an all-seeing eyeball over all threats in the target area around you at all times. We can see that that octagon is actually currently stationary over the last reported position where that data link contact was, which is still very, very useful for our situational awareness and knowing that there was a flight of two MiG-29s in that area just a few moments ago. There they are, right there. We'll go ahead and lock him up. Make sure that we've got our AMRAM selected. So at this point here, we've got a really perfect situation where we want to use our primary data link contact or primary data link track on this friendly F-16 that's gonna be behind the enemy MiG-29s that we're gonna be engaging. So let's go ahead and set them as our primary data link track. So that way we can keep track of them while engaging these MiG-29s. Got them flying away from us currently. They're 15 nautical miles out, but we're not getting a large circle telling us to launch our AMRAM simply because of the fact that they're flying away from us very, very fast. And we're having to chase them down from behind, which leads to a very low kill probability. As they reach the end of their orbit and they start to turn left again, we can see the kill probability start to go up and we'll see our launch zone start to expand and give us a good shot on the enemy aircraft. You can see our friendly F-16s are still out over here, so we're in no danger of accidentally shooting the good guys.
we're at. They're starting to come around the end of their orbit, and we're getting into a launch acceptable zone now for the firing of our AIM-120s. Okay, we're and splash. And splash two. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys moving forward and uh, fly safe out there and stay healthy, of course, as always. I think you guys are really, really going to love this new feature of the F-16. So we'll see you guys in the next one.